Well, this is a high seat as well. Sturdy, <laughs> built by scaffolding and some kind of camo netting. First time I'm sitting here. Over there is the highway. So we'll see. I'll try not to shoot a car. <laughs> okay, the dog is in that direction, so right. Okay, so here's the setup. So the road is over there and it travels that direction. So I can basically fire over there. So I can ignore, well, I'll keep track if anything moves there. And perhaps we can reposition or something. But hopefully the road scares away any moves <laughs> and it come this direction where it's a safe firing direction for me. Fire, firearm is loaded and put on safe. I have the Coltac bag as a good shooting rest. It's perfect for situations like this with the new filling. It doesn't weigh anything. Also, I can sit on it if I need to. You can see where the dogs are on my Garmin. They are uh, 1.65 kilometers away. And if I need to glass anything, uh, does this work? Oh, no. But anyway, uh, if I need to see anything in the in the bushes over there, I can do that. I've lasered all the distances, 300 meter, 200 meter, 100 meter, so I know my holdovers for all distances. So now, now we wait and we hope we'll see something interesting. So I noticed a fun thing. We have this tradition in Sweden that if you shoot a moose from a place like this, a high seat or wherever, you take the empty casing and you put it on a tiny tree branch and then uh, <coughs> we call that uh, Hillsträd and uh, a translation of, of that in English would be empty casing tree <laughs> anyway so the branch grows into the empty casing and it looks kind of funny after a while <sighs> supposedly good luck well I'm sitting in a re <laughs> in this construction I don't know I forgot the word for this but it's not tree but we still have empty casings <laughs> from moose shot from this position I saw one in there as well <laughs> so I guess moose do come by here sometime so there's still a chance no moose today either Wasn't that cold? Well, the day is still young. I'm gonna head back to the cabin and get some breakfast. Am I visible? I hope I am. I have a layer of merino wool. I think you say, call it that. <laughs> the balaclava is that. And I have it next to my skin. Over there, I, have, I think I have like four layers of clothing over my body I have a thin sock and a oh, <laughs> little bird hello little bird uh, I have double socks and really good shoes but I still still cold those birds are super super friendly uh, What's the name of those? Like Siberian J, I think it's the name of it. Well, this swamp will not make my feet less cold. Anyway, time to light a fire in the cabin, put up my feet and get them warm again. Not really sure what's the, what the best way is to keep your toes uh, warm when you're just standing still. I try to move them around so I get more blood flow into them. But I guess the main culprit here is this nicotine. Me using Swedish snooze all the time. 
And here we come to a typical cabin. This one is a bit more elaborate than what they usually are. A little stream here. This is nice. Okay guys, I'm gonna have to jump on some slippery stones here so I can't really film. But yeah, talk to you later. The others are butchering a moose, but I wasn't here when they shot it, so uh, I don't get any meat from it. So I'm not butchering. I'm going to sit alone uh, in a high seat. And I just noticed that there's snow on the top of the mountain. Oh, this shitty zoom on my phone won't really show it, but it is snow. <laughs> right, I'm in my father's Volvo. Gonna get out and walk into the forest uh, for a while. Then sooner or later I'll get to a lake and we have a high seat there. We used to have a tower there. You can perhaps see a little pile of wood. A guy built that many years ago now and he built the roof so short you had to crawl inside of it and you could barely sit up ridiculous so he extended the roof but it was still very shitty and as you can see it's right at the edge of, of, uh, of the forest so the ground wasn't that stable so we, we built another one or I didn't but the uh, old man did this one is uh, a bit sturdier. It's not finished totally yet. We need to put down li lines in the ground to make it so winter storms don't tip it over. But it's a bit safer, a bit sturdier. And this is isolated. And it's nice. It doesn't have something to hold on to while climbing up yet, but yeah. And we cut down a few trees here so we could get a better overview of the area. So there is a salt stone on the other side, white dot. And to the other side of the lake it's about 250, 250 meters. About 150 just over to the other side. So it's, it might be a long shot in this direction, but straightforward, it's perfectly okay. And that's fine as well. Yeah, let's climb up. The climb upwards is a bit awkward. So sliding glass windows with a nice Downwards direction if you need to take a shot. It's plenty of room for one person, but two persons can technically sit inside of here. We've done it. And outside we have a little area here. And we're supposed to be able to sit here as well if it's a hot day. Yeah. And the roof. It's a bit oversized. Yeah. So what did I bring with me? Except spotting scope, rifle, cold tack. Bag, that's really good. Works well in situations like these. Since it's a, a clam bag like this, you just put it over the window and uh, then you have a very stable shooting position. This one many variants of this Let's see just fold it out it doesn't weigh anything and then you have a mug awesome i brought some tea and milk because i've been drinking too much coffee also cookies <laughs> my father gave me this i love this but i shit myself when i eat it so um, yeah i have i have I have toilet paper in my bag. <laughs> Need to eat this. Can't stop it. Snooze, of course. Yeah, some 
spare clothes, extra water, fire kit, blah blah blah. But I'm very close to the road, very close to the car. So, survival bit is. Uh, well, I have it with me, but probably not gonna be necessary. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's wait for Mr. Moose to show up. Well, sun is going, going down soon. I've been sitting here for a few hours. And the only thing I've seen is mosquitoes. There's a mosquito on the top of my suppressor. Let's see if I can zoom in and show it to you. There it is. Oh, focus on the mosquito. Oh, whatever. Mosquitoes are not that exciting. Yeah, so... Right, time to get back to the car and try to make some fire in the furnace in the cabin to get warm again. Okay. It's a beautiful nature here. Sometimes there's swans in this little lake. In the background is the mountain with snow on the top. It's a track we use for all-wheel drives. Ferry material when we build stuff like yeah, the high seats. Now when I'm not trying to get a moose, I don't mind talking, <laughs> because uh, if a bear hears me, it's gonna go in the other direction or just hide. 99 times out of 100, bears really don't want to mess with humans. Still not taking any chances. <clears throat> Rifle is loaded on my shoulder. <laughs> if suddenly a bear showed up on his hind legs here, and just dropped the phone and started blasting. <laughs> oh there, that's a nightmare. It's been quite quiet this hunting season for us. Last year, one of the old men almost got killed by a bear. He's a really old high seat. It's not visible anyway. He's uh, an extremely experienced hunter so he was fine. He managed to drop the bear a couple of meters in front of him like right over there. So yeah he got between the bear and some the bear's kill, like a dead moose that's buried behind stuff like this. Unfortunately, he's had some health issues, sudden health issues. He's getting better, of course. Oh, no, well, he is. But most people in this hunting team, they're all re relatives of mine basically, but most of them are fairly old. Another one of them, a really, really nice guy. He's too old to hunt now, can't really move around by himself at all anymore. He's not coming to the hunts since a couple of years. That's sad. He was awesome, one of my favorites. Really, really old guy. He's dead now, unfortunately. He died a couple of years back. But I love that old man. Even though I couldn't really speak with him. He only spoke a language called Mjankali. Uh, a really old variant of Finnish and Swedish. That's spoken around here. It's, the, it's an official minority language in Sweden. Every one of my relatives speak it, but I never learned it. We moved to Stockholm in 1986 and I was too small to... Oh, well, too small to small. My father never taught me. And then you won't learn. Well, 
then again, only one thing I would have had learning that language was ability to speak with my elder relatives. And uh, they're all passing away. I'm getting older. I'm 43 this year. And my grandfather and grandmother on both my father and mother's side are both passed away. They all sp spoke mainly me and Kelly. So yeah, this is the nature. <clears throat> way, way above the Arctic Circle in the northern part of Sweden. Quite beautiful in the autumn. Looks like everything is on fire. And I like the, the colors. This kind of reminds me of early morning. Early mornings with some frost on the ground and some mist. That's awesome. And up here you can get very low hanging clouds as well. Up close to the mountains. I'm not sure how high up I am now, right now. I remember once I was on top of the mountain up there and uh, in the really early morning just when the sun rose and uh, the clouds were below me, like a lid over the landscape. Looked like someone poured milk all over everything. And just the mountain tops sticked up out of it. That was beautiful. So yeah, hunting for me is more about uh, enjoying nature. Enjoying the company of my relatives while they're still alive. Trying to keep some small part of my cultural heritage before that's erased for all future. <coughs> for several different reasons. That's not what this video is about. This cabin we're coming up coming up to was built a long time ago now. I don't remember if it was 1940s or 50s, but a long time ago. There was no roads. We have really good forest roads in Sweden. You really don't need a four-wheel drive to vehicle to drive those. Any vehicle will do. But we have, the roads are lined with rocks from mines, and the blast mine, mine shafts. So they're quite sharp. You easily get a flat tire running those. Anyway. Before roads, they took all the material for this cabin on sleds in the winter and brought it here. And then in the summer, they built this. I've been taking care of this together with my relatives. We've been keeping it in a good condition. So I helped paint this and did some carpenting on it. It's beautiful. Super, super basic. It has a wood stove inside. Two, I think it's three beds inside, yes. It, wor it works. It's not that fancy, but it is a good cottage. <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep in that tonight. I'm going to a bigger one that has a sauna because I'm filthy and sauna is the solution to everything. Well, at least if you're filthy. Now I can't really walk and talk anymore because I'm going to have to walk on these planks to get over this wet piece of land or mir as we call it in Swedish. I'm not sure what the English word for that is. Swamp? Yeah, I'm gonna need to balance on this because those wooden boards are not really that fixed to anything. <laughs> I don't wanna get wet and cold. Okay. Look at this sunset. Well, the sun is over there. But yeah, here you can at least see I'm a bit, bit above sea level. See the mountains in the distance there, I guess. 
some more blue shifted ones over there. Yeah, beautiful. Quite far away from civilization. When you're up here and it's totally pitch black, there's no lights at all, as far as I can see. So that's nice. <sighs> well, that worked out fine. Only took two matches. <laughs> Well, this is gonna have to. This is gonna have to burn for a while. Uh, so the way I was taught to do the sauna is keep the window open while you heat up the the stones, and then when the stones are heated up enough to boil the water immediately, and you're ready to sit in the sauna, just close the window. Otherwise, you're gonna get this dry heat in here uh, and this will be like sitting on a frying pan. So close that, then pour a lot of water on it and then all the heat will be from uh, from uh, the, the, the water that, uh, the water vapor that's really hot coming off the stones. And that's a much more pleasant heat than just the dry heat from just the stone seeding up to the room. Right, well, that's uh, the way I was taught. Anyway, it's getting dark outside. Time for a sauna. <laughs>